Hello everyone. In the previous lesson, we have learned about objectivity as characteristic of a test to create a standard procedures for test administration, scoring, and interpreting test results. While we are trying to lessen any unnecessary intervention from the test score and also we have discussed validity as one of the characteristics of a good test which refers to the ability of a test in determining items which are supposed to represent the characteristics that we are trying to measure in this lesson we will learn about reliability measure which suggests that test has to produce consistent and stable results over time under the same conditions. Let's just say, for example, the test taker took Neo Pi R and based on the results, he responds with extroversion and conscientiousness consistently. We know that the objective test Neo Pi R has a good internal consistency since we have computed high scores with the set scales plus based on the interview and evidence he presented or the applicant presented that, that such characteristics consistently manifest. Okay. While validity testing tells us that good construct and criterion of the test items can bring us valid sample of behavior, in terms of reliability testing, we are asking if our test can come up with consistent and stable results under the same conditions. We will discuss some uh, measures of reliability based on stability and consistency as well. First, we have the characteristics of uh, being uh, having a stable result. So when we talk about stability of a test, this may include test retest and parallel forms to determine if a test is stable. So a researcher may conduct a test repeatedly. Let us say, for example, today, I will conduct a specific visual spatial test on a respondent or client and found that he performed above average based on the results and interpretation of the raw score. Then, after six months or after a year, for example, that client might go back for a retest with the same conditions or employing standard procedures in terms of administering the test, scoring, interpreting the test results, the test taker should perform above average for the second time around if the test has a good measure of test retest reliability. That is, if I will be comparing the two results with the computation of, let's say, a Spearman-Brown formula. To, uh, so the true aim of the test retest reliability all right, is to measure the degree of agreement between time points. Okay. Next, we have the reliability of parallel forms. When we say parallel forms, uh, we want to obtain the reliability of a test based on administering different versions of a test or an assessment tool. Let us say, for example, a psychometrician has constructed a personality test on extroversion. That psychometrician created a form A and form B. Both forms should have uh, the same valid constructs of personality that uh, he wants to measure. Another example, if a human resource employee was assigned to construct a uh, standard interview questions which aim to measure extroversion and conscientiousness, for example, uh, with the use of his knowledge with test development, he is expected to construct a set of questions or items that are valid for set A and set B. So even another human resource employee or interviewer uh, would ever use set A or set B, the responses of the applicant should be uh, invariant under the same conditions when asked uh, using either set A or set B. So in order for us to measure parallel forms reliability, we may calculate the correlation or the test results uh, using a Spearman-Brown formula. Okay, so after explaining important characteristics of stability of a test, uh, where invariant responses from items uh, should be gathered using test retest and parallel forms, let us now proceed with consistency, which is focusing on inter-item 
split half and uh, inter-rater reliability. reliability. When we talk about inter-item reliability, it simply refers to the consistency of the test items which intend to measure the same construct. It is suggested that the measure of inter-item consistency is uh, calculated from a single administration of a single form of a test. So for example, a researcher may have created an extraversion scale and so with the, with the use of inter-item correlation, we may analyze the reliability of a test items or uh, most likely exhibit high value from a computation of Cronbach's alpha for an instance or a researcher may use uh, Kuder Richard, uh, Richardson's KR20 uh, reliability coefficient for dichotomous items that is for the right or wrong answers or if we will run uh, data analysis using si uh, same instrument from introverted uh, respondents we should gather opposite results based on uh, test scores for an instance okay so after discussing inter-item reliability of, or consistency of test items or measuring the same construct we will now talk about the split half uh, reliability okay so the split half reliability method allows us to assess internal consistency of a test with this uh, we may use Cronbach's alpha again to measure the uh, extent to which all the parts of the test contribute equally to uh, what we what is being measured so this is done by comparing the test results of one half of a test with the results from the other half. Let us say, for example, one half may be composed of even numbered uh, questions, while the other half is composed of odd numbered questions. So, un unlike the parallel forms method, which can be uh, likely difficult to construct. So a researcher may use a split half method where only one test is administered to compute the reliability coefficient in this technique. So for example, an individual may be given one, uh, 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 let's say, uh, extraversion uh, scale. Okay? So say if, if an extroverted respondent uh, at exp uh, expressed agreement with extraversion statements such as item number one, for example, uh, is talkative or item number three for an instance full of energy and this agreement with his statements such as item number five for example is reserved or item number seven tends to be lazy so this would indicate a good internal consistency of the test items all right so the next one is inter-rater reliability it suggests that Two or more raters, observers, coders, or examiners uh, should agree with uh, the item given. For example, um, generally it answers the issue of consistency in implementation of a rating system. For example, during your test construction proposal, for an instance, there will be at least three observers or raters who would agree or disagree with your claims about your questionnaire and um, scale being used. Let us say that during your proposal, uh, you want to measure openness to experience scale and you cited all the characteristics of this uh, factor. Let us say you told the observers that this may include ideas or being curious or fantasy or being imaginative, aesthetics or being artistic, actions or wide interest, feelings or being excitable, values or being unconventional, and excitement seeking or being adventurous. So two of your panel members, for example, agreed with your proposal that the set factors or subtests are indicators of openness to experience scale. All right? But one of your panelists disagreed, for an instance, that excitement seeking uh, scale or being adventurous is likely appropriate for extroversion scale instead. So by the observation given, if, if two of your panelists would agree that the said characteristics are accepted, then you may proceed with constructing the most valid items and questions for the said characteristic. Okay? And you may also consider the comment 
of that one panelist where uh, you can support your claim uh, which may be questionable when it comes to the construct proposed all right of course uh, through other forms of reliability testing and uh, after gathering data from pilot testing you can create a more uh, justifiable uh, construct for this proposed items okay so in summary if the observers are tasked to agree on what measures are likely of uh, the same construct so if two or more of them would reject the items the said items are unacceptable okay to measure integrated reliability we can calculate the percentage where 100 percent is being the highest of agreement and sometimes a correlation where one being the highest between their different sets of uh, results if all observers give similar ratings again we can say that the test has high inter-rater reliability okay so after discussing the importance of uh, reliability measures let's uh, let me share with you a bit of insight on uh, Likert scale okay basically the Likert scale shows the researchers the strength of respondents attitude uh, towards certain items so that uh, it is a linear continuum that may measure from uh, strongly disagree uh, for uh, to uh, uh, agree or strongly agree okay so for example in a typical uh, five Likert scale for example we have uh, for example number one as your uh, strongly disagree uh, number two is the uh, disagree number three is neither agree nor disagree or sometimes uh, referred to neutral and number four as agree and number five uh, could be the strongly agree when a five point Likert scale or Likert scale is used there is a tendency for some uh, respondents to select the neutral or the number three or not sure in response to avoid making real choice so however this may be more useful to some degree of analyzing the data or data that we will be gathering instead of using a four point Likert or Likert scale in some cases a four point uh, Likert scale may distort the results as there will be no neutral indicator towards the item so in some studies a five point or seven point Likert scale data may be more accurate than four point data okay so during data collection some respondents might not answer at all okay so such happenings it will give you uh, as uh, insight as a researcher into how our items are being constructed so our are our items appear to measure what they supposed to measure so are they valid are they well constructed can we even understand what items we constructed or how does our questionnaire look like so in general using a five point Likert scale is more preferable to know uh, that they were uh, new, they, they, uh, they are neutral uh, responses rather than having uh, them not answer the question at all so it is our responsibility again as test developers to make a valid test to gather valid results and establish uh, reliability measures so we can gather consistent and reliable results okay so and lastly i have provided you with the links of uh, some videos uh, video tutorials on how we may compute internal consistency using Cronbach's Alpha or using a uh, Spearman Brown's uh, formula or uh, KR20. All right. So uh, in the next video, we will learn more about characteristics of a good test discussing the utility for this lecture series. Thank you very much. We will see you in the next uh, presentation.